What are the uh, authorities there expecting then? Well, this protest vehicle convoy is banned. The authorities have said that anyone purposefully disrupting traffic faces an up to 10 year prison sentence. And so they're hoping that's enough to keep this convoy from coming here into Brussels city center. That is the main aim this morning. The police are going to try to be redirecting those vehicles over to a big parking lot that's next to the Atomium Monument here on the outskirts of the city. What they want to avoid is traffic here in the city center becoming snarled. But of course, they also don't want to provoke any kind of uh, big flare up and, or confrontation with these protesters. So this is going to be a very delicate dance this morning. Now, of course, this convoy, as you mentioned, is inspired by that one in Canada, in Canada's capital, Ottawa, uh, which has itself uh, sparked protests also in uh, the United States and Australia and, of course, in neighboring France. A lot of this convoy this morning uh, appears to be the the remnants or a continuation of what was happening in neighboring France. And the, the big thing we're watching this morning is just to see if that convoy does uh, come into the city center and kind of evading those police controls. And Dave, let's not forget, of course, uh, these protests going on right as many European nations, including, of course, uh, Belgium there, are actually relaxing or, or getting rid of COVID restrictions altogether anyway. Yeah, I mean, this comes after the press conference we had here in Belgium on Friday, where they announced an end to almost all of the remaining restrictions. Uh, so nightclubs can reopen here starting on Friday. Bars can now stay open all night if they want. They don't have to close at midnight anymore. The restrictions that remain, of course, are the indoor mask mandate and the use of the COVID safe ticket, the vaccine passport, as some call it. Uh, and that has been the thing that has been really sparking a lot of these protests, not just here in Brussels, but around Europe. Now, at that press conference on Friday, Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croce said that he hopes that the requirement for that COVID safe ticket, which right now we still need to get into restaurants, bars, gyms, etc., he says he hopes to end that next month. That would match what's going to be happening uh, with the government, as previewed, at least in neighboring France, that the, that requirement will be ending next month. At this point, people question its effectiveness, given that with the Omicron variant, uh, have, being vaccinated isn't really a guarantee that you're not going to be able to spread uh, the virus, although, of course, it protects from serious illness. Uh, so we'll see if that dampens enthusiasm for these protests. It may be that uh, the combination of those remaining restrictions ending and a kind of suggestion bordering on a promise from the prime minister that that COVID safe ticket will be gone next month, that may dampen the enthusiasm of the protesters because that CST, that COVID safe ticket, has been the main focus of the ire of uh, anti-restrictions protests here in Brussels so far. Dave, thanks very much. Dave Keating, our correspondent, talking to us there from Brussels.